Take Command Podcast. That's Logan Paulson. I am Craig Hoffman. And for all of the ways in which the offense was obviously good, they had 481 yards. And for the ways that they struggled, some of the drops, some of the penalties. Dude, on tape, I knew Jaden had a pretty good game. On tape, this thing is sick. Like yeah. he just continually overcomes bad situations. Um, hey, all right, you dropped one. Fine. I throw a, a ridiculous cover two ball to Terry McLaurin that Terry kind of mistimes his jump a little bit, goes through his hands. How about next play? I hit you for 60. How about, oh, there's a free blitzer coming. Let me just, I see it. Let me run out. Let me hop, skip, and jump over the, the tackler uh, and, and get a first down. Like, with his arms, with his legs, Jaden Daniels continues to be that freaking dude. And that is before you even get to the Hail Mary, which, you know, is some combination of skill and luck at the end. Yeah, and it, it was really interesting to watch the All-22 because, like, is he the most accurate he's ever been? No. Is he, you know, like there was some, you know, talking to some other media people, it's all oh, that ball placement isn't perfect. That's on the right spot. I mean, this is maybe, I don't want to be hyper, again, like exaggerate here, but this is maybe my favorite game of his to watch because I felt like the difficulty level defensively was really ramped up. I felt like he had to make a lot of tough throws. I feel like he had to throw under pressure. There was a lot of people in his lap in the pocket. Got to give credit to Cliff. I think he does such a great job of creating space in the back end. And again, you have pieces like Zach who understands how to kind of create separation, find those windows and um, I think on the first completion, exactly, it's a little um, kind of pull concept. So you get a five yard sit, a flat, and a dig. Everybody in the NFL runs it. And, you know, Jaden kind of looks down the sit. Uh, Edmonds kind of attaches to the sit, hits Zach over the middle of the field. Great catch. And, like, that seems easy, but throwing the ball over the middle field, manipulating the hook player, like, that's big time stuff. And that ball is maybe not the best ball of all time. Zach's got to fall down and get it. But the process to get there was excellent. The deep ball to Terry couldn't have been better. And just his ability to consistently elevate. Like, I was kind of like, you know, why did the offense seemingly struggle in, you know, in, at times in this game? And there were times where it's like, oh, we have a, a negative run or we've got a penalty or we have an incomplete pass on first down. And then Jane Daniels just puts on a Superman cape and, scrambles for a first down and he does that probably three times in the game you mentioned the one where he kind of kicks out and does that craziness that's a free runner off the nickel pressure like we just talked about and I just again I, I don't want to hype him up too much but in terms of things you appreciate you're like man like this is a really solid game and I think his stat line is 21 for what is it 37 something like that uh what I got a box bar in front of me he went uh 21 of 38 for 326 and a touchdown and I want to say I charted at least at least four drops, probably yeah. five. And and that also is like, for instance, another play where he kind of uh, like he elevates, and it's this close. First drive of the game, last play before the field goal. Montez Sweat uh, winds up winning. It's a really tough block for Wiley. Yeah. Um, and Sweat wins, flushes him out, and Luke is wide open in the back of the end zone. But because Montez is in his face, he can't get just enough on it that he can get the ball there in time, what before defenders can recover and get back to Luke. But I'm t I, like, if Luke has a size bigger foot, he's able to get that toe tap, and to yeah. get that ball off in that situation is crazy. Like, and it's, it's that close So there, you know, you got the four drops, you have that one. That's not really on him. Cause he's got Montez sweat in his face. You have a couple others that are like that as well. Like the numbers, when you go 28 for 38 or 21 for 38 for 326 and a touchdown, and it still doesn't explain how good you were in the game. Like that's a hell of a football game from a quarterback. Yeah. And I think it's like the, like the down to down elevation of the offense was pretty cool to see. Like, cause again, there were times like where you could tell that they didn't, the, the commanders didn't really have an answer offensively, like for what the, the Bears had presented. You know, like the Bears were kind of winning the down. And sometimes that happens, you know, like you call the best play possible, but, you know, they've got better, they've got good players too. And it doesn't quite work out. He buys a little bit of time or makes a really great anticipatory throw. And, um, and again, that was really cool to see a couple, like a lot, most of his scrambles. I think we were kind of talking about his last one in the game where it's the third and five. Maybe he could have stayed in the pocket, but most of them, he's got a good feel. Nobody's open really. It's, or it's a little bit muddy. You don't love it. And you're able to scramble and get a first down on a play, on a, on a, on a look where you're kind of like, man, this isn't exactly what we want. This is a kind of a risky throw. And I think that kind of stuff is, is really, is just impressive. You know, like his poise and his composure. And we talk about that all the time, but the moment never seems too big. And then to think about 
that he didn't really like really, really practice this week. You know, he kind of, he threw obviously, like they talked about the workout they did on Friday, but like for him to get to this level of preparation and to play with this level of consistency in this game off kind of a, you know, like a, like an abridged or a different type of week structure for him, um, was pretty impressive, you know, and I, and I saw yeah. Dan in his presser, like, you know, someone asked him like, Oh, you know, Jaden didn't look quite like himself. And Dan was like, man, I thought he played great. Like I see, and I feel what Dan's talking about there. Cause I think he did a great job. Yeah. And this is a credit to Jaden and also a credit to the organization and cliff and how the offensive organization, I'll call it in terms of how they practice and prepare that allowed them to do it. And I don't think a lot of teams can one Jaden is in his virtual reality headset and in his walkthroughs and all that stuff that didn't require him to throw a football. And he just kept doing all of that stuff. Uh, the same that he always would. And so he mentally was as prepared as you possibly can be. And then also they do all those walkthroughs during the day. Yeah. Um, and he was able to participate in those. So even though he was a DNP in actual practice, he still participated in a lot of stuff that he needs to be ready. And that is a credit to, again, how they prepare, which is a matchup with how he prepares and everybody continuing to do their jobs just in case he was ready to go. And then sure enough, he was ready to go. Um, the other thing that stood out to me is some some of the throws from an anticipation standpoint that he makes. Um, the Ertz, the Ertz almost touchdown, like that one maybe is a hair late, but it's still like he Zach's not quite out of his break fully yet before he throws that, and he's got to um, throw it like that. And and really, that's one where if Zach, like I actually think a younger Zach Ertz catches that pretty easily. Um, where he can like go up, snatch it, and turn and protect his body a little bit, uh, a little bit more, and he's just not quite as twitched up as he was in his early twenties because none of us are. Um, <laughs> but there's another play to Ertz with fourteen twenty six to go in the third quarter. So this is the the third play of the third quarter. Um, they they hit a Diami Brown screen to start the quarter. Um, and then, actually, no, sorry. I think this is actually the second play of the third quarter. They hit Diami on a screen for six yards. And then Jaden puts a ball literally between five Bears players. I think it's a CO uh, situation. Um, it's, a where sale. it's a sale concept, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a sale? Yeah, because yeah. Terry, Terry's running the high the high corner. And then yeah. Zach is running underneath it on a, on a deeper. It's like an intermediate level out. And... Jaden has to throw the ball exactly when he does. And it is literally between five dudes. And you're just yeah. like, okay, that's what we're doing now. And so I think that's something that's been fun to watch on the quarterbackiness scale, if you will, Logan, is to watch him continue to throw with more and more and more anticipation in more and more situations. And you're not going to see a throw that's more anticipatory and perfect in terms of placement and all that kind of stuff than a throw uh, deep to the outside against five du- or in between five dudes to your tight end. Yeah, and again, like a lot, lot of things going on here. I'm really glad you brought this play up because it is an excellent throw. I think the play design is also excellent with Cliff. They kind of, you know, getting in this split back kind of orbit motion, put a little window dressing on it. This is a play that they've run a ton this year, and it's good that they've found different ways to kind of formationally hide it. Uh, so they pull the backside guard, comes to the front side. They get the linebackers to step up a little bit, but good kudos to the uh, to the Bears. They get a little bit of depth, right? And so. This is NFL open, significantly open, like when he's getting ready to throw the football. But I think it's, like you said, the the touch, the layering, understanding that the window's secure. Like I think the other thing is like, Terry, you mentioned is running kind of that, I'm going to call it a pylon, like you're going to run that corner, that high corner to kind of clear it out. Understanding that the DB to that side is not looking at you is also a big thing. Like he is a zone player technically. And so... That's something that I really appreciate is he had a completion also earlier to Zach, and we'll get back to this play in a second, where there's a little bit of pressure. They're trying to take a play action shot and the DB, I think, no, it's a linebacker. Uh, Edwards is dropping to a spot, but he's running with his back to the ball and and Jaden throws the football to Zach kind of out and away. And if the linebacker was looking, it would have made an interception, but Zach's able to adjust to it and make the play. But understanding kind of what NFL open is and thinking about him versus Tampa Bay and how he didn't really understand that yet. Like, Oh, the DB's position like this, I can make this throw. And I think this is a really good example to your point of saying, Oh, the DB, the corner is kind of, or the safety is kind of looking away so that I've that's protecting the throw enough for me to get the ball there. I can layer this throw up and over this linebacker because of the ball fake, because of the guard pull, it's given me enough of a window and then trusting Zach to like make a play. You know, it's, 
it is it is open at the start, but it closes very quickly. And um, there was a lot of plays like that, you know, in this game where I thought, man, like that's just a really nice throw. He had to come, come back to Terry, same type of deal. He had a couple of those like in breaking routes over the over the middle of the field where he's throwing with good anticipation, gets the ball to him. So, um, yeah, man, like I know we don't want to gush about him too much, but like he did some. He, each week he seems to be getting better, and in a week where he didn't practice, it's also very cool to see him continue that improvement. Yeah, for sure. Um, other things that I really liked is just the intentionality of getting Terry the football in key situations. Um, even like to the point of at the end of the game, uh, the, the play before the Hail Mary, it's like, which guy do we want to run the out? Our best player. Like there's some stuff of that with Cliff. And then also there's some big spots where I, I think Jaden's clearly looking for Terry. Um, so Terry, five for 125 in this game since week two. Uh, where the first two weeks, his numbers were not that great, struggled a little bit. I think Cliff was figuring out how Terry really should be getting the football. Since then, uh, six games, he's had 98 yards or more in four of them. 300-yard uh, games in a 98-er, and then 52 and 53 in the other one. So that's really good stuff to see between Jaden and Terry. Um, I, I think the other thing that I would wonder is the Bears were able to do obviously some stuff in terms of preventing them from scoring. We talked about how a lot of that was self-inflicted, the penalties, yeah. that. But is there anything that you see, uh, and I'll open it back up to the whole offense, uh, not just the run game, or not just the pass game here in Jaden. Is there anything that if I'm New York this week, if I'm Pittsburgh in two weeks, if I'm Philly in three weeks, that I look at this tape and go, oh, okay, maybe this is something that we should do because this Bears team did a better job stopping this offense than anybody else has in weeks. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything that jumps out. Um, I think, obviously, the thing that I came away with is the eight-man boxes versus the run, kind of making sure you have enough resources allocated to that is going to make it tough. I also thought some of the stuff they did in lighter boxes, so even when they were in two shells, the line movement stuff was interesting, um, and the it seemed to present enough issues for the offensive line in certain situations that it, it just decreased the rushing efficiency enough that we're, we're obviously we're talking about it today. I think the other thing was the blitz, like how, how we're calling our protections, I think was the other thing that I noticed in this, like you could maybe exploit some of those. Oh, we got the rotation here. We're going to, that's, that's the guy we're working to. Oh no, we're bringing it this way, but that's just kind of good ball. You know what I mean? That's just like good football one oh one. And so I don't know if teams will adopt some of that stuff, but those things kind of popped up, but on the whole, like to your initial point, like there wasn't anything egregious that I thought because like they like you said they did move the football and if it's not for two illegal legal men downfield there was a offsides in the red zone I'm Noah had to... a really bad drop early in the red zone who Noah Brown yeah he really did he had a bad, bad like a bad what happened like to that bad... guy by the end of the game by the way did he make up for that at the I end? think he did yeah oh, but okay. Okay. but so but I mean those are four like on four drives into the red zone or low red where like we were in total control and even the one to Zach Ertz like that's a really tough catch and I'm not like this is not me saying oh Zach Scott you know oh, Zach make the play but like even that play it's like that's a legitimate f those are legitimate five opportunities right there where we should be getting probably touchdowns so as much as you want to give credit to the Bears like if we make the plays or the offense makes the plays that they're supposed to make I think we're probably okay and again if Jaden keeps elevating and the offense yeah. keeps elevating because like Cliff is Cliff again. I can't. We talk about Cliff a lot. He does such a good job of creating these opportunities for these athletes, and then Jaden does a great job of executing it. So the whole picture kind of works really well together. So to me, it just comes down to executing. And this isn't executing like, and I know, I know in years past, I'm like the offense has to execute better. It's like it's well schemed. It's well designed. There are people open. There's space. We just got to hit some of these throws and uh, hit, hit, hit on some of these opportunities and not shoot ourselves in the foot. Yeah. The no thing. penalties and catch the football. Yeah. And like Jaden twice more, can you be more accurate? Like on a 38 throws where you were mostly accurate. I mean, that's, that would be like, now we're getting back in the Cincinnati, like 80, 90% territory. You know what this game actually reminded me of though, Logan, to wrap up here. This reminded me of the New York game the first time around. They won. They shot themselves in the foot and couldn't finish uh, any drives. And the next, uh, what is this? Five games that they went on. They scored 38 against Cincinnati, 42 yeah. against uh, the Cardinals, 34 against the Browns, 23 against the Ravens, and then 40 against Carolina. So if this is the little bit of a wake up call, they're like, hey, let's lock back in on some of the details. Let's learn our lessons to use Dan's language. Uh, then I look out, look out New York, uh, who, by the way, lost last night and benched Deontay Banks. Uh, so good times there. <laughs> Things are going great for Big Blue. Um, 
we'll see what they can do because Trustway barely punted in that that or was that that game he didn't punt at all or did he, he punt, didn't punt at all in that game? game. Yeah, back to back weeks he didn't punt. Um, so good times, good times. So we'll see uh, how they how they uh, correct all that stuff coming up against the Giants on Sunday.